much of an energy source that's a little, little bit too powerful but it's not but because it turns into a gas that much <laughs> is if they store the form. gas again pyro what's going to stop somebody from from taking four days worth of produced hydrogen punk okay and liquefying it what's going to stop somebody from doing that well that's, that's going to stop kill somebody from doing people. exactly the same thing yeah. with fertilizer or a 22 well, i mean that's not many people fertilizer bombs all people Are a little bit big, um, but yeah, no, nothing stopped. We've done, and so I'm just saying that, yeah, it's you know, there's points where this stuff does become, you know, all right. So you're in Manhattan, and and one mile from Manhattan, there's, and some of those ships now are going to be carrying liquefied natural gas. <laughs> you know, I mean, what's the scenario here? Like I said, if somebody gets a little bit smart. And puts an oxidant with that liquefied natural gas. I mean, you know, I mean, really, this isn't major physics. This is Osama bin Laden physics, and it's dangerous. Again, I think you know this is in stage three of that whole E. K. Roth ladder of acceptance that peak oil is real. It's here. We probably peaked in 2008, and people are, you know, there's uh, denial, anger, bargaining depression acceptance so we're in bargaining if we can just build enough windmills if we can just put enough solar power in if we can just uh, you know do whatever uh, you know we can maintain our standard of living just as it is and it ain't happening not without a new source a revolutionary new source of high energy flux density it ain't happening Gary mentioned a 30 percent what is happening though? Look, oh, look, look! All you do is change the numbers. So it's like the social security. It's like the social security scenario. If population growth stops, it's doable. If a few other things happen, it's doable. Because yeah, peak oil just means that you've hit the middle. You know, it doesn't mean that you hit the brick wall. I mean, obviously there's less on the second half than there was in the first half, and it's harder to get on the second half on the ride down. But the point is, is we do have time. It's not like you hit a brick wall and then you're done, okay? So it is, you can, you can um, ride it down. You can fly the plane without the engine and you can glide to a landing. You don't have to crash land. So that's my only argument here is that this stuff isn't, this stuff isn't meaningless. These other sources of energy are incredibly important because that's the only way we are going to glide down. But it would be a delusion for somebody to argue that we can do exactly what we're doing now and live exactly the way we're living now and waste it as exactly as how we're wasting it now and do it. Yeah, right. That's bullshit. We can't keep building five Dubais every fucking year in the world and, um, yeah and not run out of energy and not have energy at seven dollars a gallon or whatever the number is going to be yeah we're in we're in complete agreement on that as far as you know and it's a multifaceted problem it's a multifaceted aggregated problem we have the credit problem which you proposed a solution to we don't need to revisit that we've got peak oil we've got overpopulation we've got peak goddamn near everything peak water peak you know trees whatever peak land uh, i agree you cut back on the population population which I would say there's a snowball's chance in hell of that happening and we've got a shot at this and back to Piro yeah you know I think the stuff that's going on in Maui like at the Maui saddle where they're putting in all the w wind turbines I think that's great I'm not against that and I think you know the, the solar panels is great I just don't think that's going to maintain our standard of living indefinitely into the future we just put a trillion dollars into our stupid crooked banks to the stupid crooks that ran them in the first place, not even to replacement ones. And we already have, yeah, solar panels being put in, just small government subsidies because it's expensive. We're just talking tens of thousands out of people's, you know, pocket money, but it's not. If you had trillions of dollars, you could do it all over. And instead we gave that. And that's why I say, who cares if you lose the banking industry if you were going to spend a trillion dollars somewhere? You, you, there's places to spend it where people will get together and start new banks, maybe with not run by crooks. So, yeah, I have a better yeah, outlook about subject. that. Subject again, it's like talking about the war or something. There's no point in talking about money we've already pissed away. Obviously, <laughs> we really can't unpiss it. 
But go ahead, guy at the end there. Um, whatever the 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 Diogenes guy, whatever. Embernus. Yeah, whatever. Ness guy. Oh, he ran away. <laughs> what happened? But fuck. Um, but anyway, tongue okay. guy, lizard since he, man. Since he left, uh, I'll take his place. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you know we can do certain things like we can have a a modicum of a clock off the grid with enough solar panels. You know, maybe you can run the lights. Who knows? Maybe you can even run a very small suitcase-sized refrigerator. But again, you know the the very heavily energy dependent way of life that most people are used to living now I think that's coming to an end suburbia in particular is a is a massively failed experiment that's coming to an end uh, these this long distance two hour commute to work each day that's coming to an end so it's it's going to be a very I know but look look at what we have we have this I huge advantage to, to the get end. past that okay but we have this whole telecommuting thing and so now that, especially now that we have this stick cam thing and cameras, you know, now employers can watch you. So now they can ha let you work at home because now they can watch you and make sure you're not just jerking off or fucking the wife while you're getting paid. So now you'll actually have to work because they can watch you. Um, so yeah, we can, we can, you know, we can get past some of those problems now because we have the technology to do it. So suburbia doesn't really fail anymore um, because you don't have to, the commute thing. Um, but yeah, the, look, the car thing is a big problem, but the food thing is the big one too. I mean, a lot of fucking energy goes into agriculture, and that's the one that's got to scare us because if we start, you know, because the numbers will have to go up. I mean, energy is going to have to get more expensive, and if it starts, like I said, I mean, it, it, it's, this it's going to really start. People are going to start dying, you know, when food is three or four times as expensive. Well, that's exactly my point. I don't think people properly. Uh, properly appreciate what's coming down the road, what's headed straight for us. I don't think they're psychologically prepared for it. I don't think they're mentally prepared for it. I mean, people in this country, I think most of us would agree, don't have very much in the way of critical thinking skills. Uh, they can't, and peak oil is a scary motherfucker. You know, it is scary. They're, I mean, yeah, well, they don't um, have critical list thing skills either, and they don't have uh, they don't have a mass media that serves this stuff up to them. So Can yeah, they're not getting old fed any of this information. I mean, how how many regular people? Well, just let me finish this. Um, um, I mean, how many people even realize? Like I said, I don't even have the exact numbers, but I mean, just how dependent our agriculture is on this mechanized machinery. That's how it's gained all this efficiency. I mean, these crops you cannot get this these high yield crops to grow without fertilizer. And so people have this idea that everybody's just going to grow a garden in their backyard, and that's going to fix the problem. Well, it isn't going to fix the problem. I think somebody else wanted to get in here. I'll, I'll cede the floor to you. Yeah, well, well, I'm not exactly sure who's talking. Yeah, how old are you? Sub, sub DNA is talking. Okay, well, I wasn't... Uh, I wasn't, wasn't quite ready to, to respond. Uh, I, you don't want to say it doesn't I, matter. It's not because of a maturity thing. I'm just curious if you remember in the 70s all of our fears of overpopulation and all of that there was no other way with oil. We already knew it was the industrial military, industrial complex, and oil running the, the sort of the worst part of this economy and having us by the throat. We knew that. We were dealing with Iran and everything already back then. Do you remember that? Were, like, were you old enough to remember that firsthand? Uh, Pyro, are you talking to me or Gary? Well, I was talking to you. I know Gary's old enough to remember that. It depends a little bit on how young he was when he started paying attention. But I remember it. But then again, I kind of paid attention to that stuff. I remember when I was six or seven or eight and okay. talking about who was president and Nixon and why was he president again and as an eight-year-old mind. But so I remember very clearly all the gas crises, all of these things as they're hitting. And it's like a picture of rosy possibilities now compared to how screwed we were then. Yeah, so it's triply delusional. I'll answer your first question first. I'm the same age as Gary. Yes, I remember that well. And we talked about this 
you might not have been in the room, but we talked about this a little bit last week when I said, I remember the book by Paul Ehrlich, I, I forget what it was, Population Bomb, and I was talking to people in my own family about it, and, oh, Gary's 51, okay. And, you know, nobody wanted no, to I'm only 50, all right? Just could stop that, you asshole. I'm supposed <laughs> to get his fucking assholes to keep saying I'm 51. I'm not fucking 51. Anyway, long point <laughs> You long stupid point cunt. Short. Long point short, <laughs> But anyway. Gary's raising his hand. Well, I kind of thought you might be. I like the finish because the. Well, let me just throw in thing. When you brought up the '70s, like okay. everything was fucking, you know. Oh yeah, look how horrible everything was. No, everything was pretty damn good in the fucking '70s. All right. I mean, it was bad, but you know, because of Vietnam. And once we got past Vietnam, it was like, yeah, you had all, you know, you could get a damn good job, you could make damn good money. I mean, there's a lot of positive things about the '70s. So I mean, to me, to say that we're we're all doom and gloom in the 70s. It was the 80s. I remember 1980. I mean, Ronald Reagan. I remember the night he got fucking elected and I was driving in my car like 2 o'clock in the morning going to work and I'm just like, oh, life is over. It's over. I mean, the planet is going to split in half and fly into the sun. It just, we're not going to survive Ronald Reagan. Well, right. But progressive activist types of, you know, it, there's a whole population. All of this stuff to me goes back when I was growing up because I was among that kind of culture growing up. So, so and, and I just, as things have happened, coming out for these, these, pro and we're amazingly close and we definitely have solutions that are better than what we're doing now, even if we need like oil could be saved for big industrial purposes that really need that high power. You know, we're getting to that kind of point. And, you know, so I just don't see how you can, you can deny that. I mean, it's, it's gotten better, the possibilities of all of this. No, no, I, I completely disagree. I well, I know, but just, you've got it. the threats have gotten higher, though. I mean, we've seen them, <laughs> you know. And so I just, you know, Katrina... You know, okay, what if a guy decides to make his own Katrina, you know? We've seen how well, vulnerable Well, it's not the end of the world. Disaster. Well, it, it literally can be, Pyro. How much is it going to take? You know, how, you know how, what, what, what scenario, you know, perfect storm scenario can somebody write? And it's going to be pretty damn close to the end of the world. Yeah, we've got to... We've got to figure out how to bridge the gap between a, a, a world, an economy, an industrial civilization that's based on liquid fossil fuels for the most part. The, you know, coal-fired power plants give us a lot of our electricity. But bridging the gap between the, the, the Western civ that we have now to one where you know, oil is in sharp decline is going to be a bitch, man. I mean, every major oil field around the world is in sharp decline. Cantorell, world's second largest oil field, sharp decline. North Sea off England and Norway, sharp decline. Prudhoe Bay off uh, North Slope of Alaska, sharp decline. Uh, Bergan and Kuwait, steep decline. The only one that we major elephant field we really don't know about. Is well, look the at Mexico. I mean, Mexico is going to yeah, be importing that. oil. Mexico is going to start importing oil. I mean, they're going to be a net importer. Yeah, and two years ago, this this went right under the radar. I don't. I think maybe the Wall Street Journal put put it like on page 12, you know, of the news section. Mexico stopped oil shipments to the West Coast over two years ago, so we're no longer getting any 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 PMEX oil up here. And that type of thing is just gonna it's it's gonna uh, expand and grow. I mean, Mexico is one of our number one suppliers, along with Venezuela and and uh, and or uh, Nigeria. A lot of people think we get our oil from Saudi, but you know, actually most of that goes to Europe. But anyway, all these all these giant oil fields all over the world, they're all in decline, and they're not finding any more. You know that? Uh, okay, take take the Diamond Offshore rig, that one that was spewing, I think it was 50,000 barrels a day. Uh, you know, I mean that's that's a drop in the bucket compared to what the U.S. uses every single day. So, uh, uh, Anwar. Left of center, Anwar has reserves of three billion barrels. That's enough to, to
to supply the United States for less than six months.